Hello everyone, it's Dark Seeker here again. Welcome to another video. Now, we are back on the standard mode ladder and we'll be looking at the George C. Midrange Shaman. Now, George C. is an incredible player. He is a pro player uh, who does very well, I think, in tournaments. He is a fantastic Hearthstone technician and this is a deck that he brought to a tournament recently. Now, I'm well aware that the tournament meta can be different to the... Uh, uh, you know the ladder meta uh, but <clears throat> it's it's interesting because you know it this deck performed quite well I believe in in the tournament setting so I thought well let's see how it does on the ladder and I just wanted to give it a try it's a mid-range shaman as you can see you have a, a tunnel trog synergy with overload cards uh, totem golem feral spirit lightning bolt lightning storm and um, you have uh, uh, Harrison Jones to counteract the warriors and the shamans that are out there um, really good. You have uh, Blood Mage Thalnos, which synergizes very well with Spirit Claws, because you get the, spare, the extra attack on that weapon. You have Hex to control the board, take out those big threats. And then, of course, you have the MVP of this deck, in my opinion anyway, Thunder Bluff Valiant, which can buff up your totems, which is good. So the idea is, over the course of a long game, you fill your board with totems, play Thunder Bluff, and win the game. Uh, if only it was as simple as that. And let's not forget, on his own there, as you can see, three cost Argent Horse Rider. We are not aggro shaman. We are certainly not aggro shaman. But sometimes a little horse rider can come in and get you a favourable trade or even lethal. So let's see how this deck performs on the ladder. This is the George C. Shaman in action. Okay, so we're going up against a hunter. Huh. So we have the Tunnel Trog, we have the Spirit Claws. We are probably going to keep both of those, and this is a rank 11 game. Harrison will probably be dumped. Yeah. Okay. So... Tunnel Trog on turn one or the Spirit Claws. We play the Trog here, uh, mainly because it will allow us to trade into something that he plays, uh, something like an Argent Squire. And on the off chance that we draw, no we don't, but we draw something like a Totem Golem, uh, it buffs up the Trog allowing for a, a more efficient trade perhaps or a more effective trade or even for us to go face uh, but we didn't draw the totem golem but i was uh, i was partial to having the minion on the board because now what it lets me do is it lets me play spirit claws and it lets me clear his argent squire there we go we have board control because we put the minion down first on the board. That was the 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 critical play there. And uh, this is where Spirit Claws, even though it is not buffed up, is proving its worth. Combining that with a charging horsey, aka the horse rider, we are able to uh, maintain control. Oh he has his own horsey! And obviously prioritizing with the trog. That's fine. Nice bit of board control there. Now, why did I play the Flame Tongue Totem? Because there wasn't a need to, but I did. Why? Because I want to do a bit of damage to his face, and I want to set up some trades for the following turn. Ah, Huffer. Right, so Huffer's a problem. So there, I, I, I've, I've lost out on some value there. He, he got the free kill on my Flame Tongue. His Huffer survives. That's really unfortunate. A number of different options in play here. We could start by totaming up. Uh, that discounts our thing from below. But, spell power. Hmm. Very appealing. Fly, 
Okay, there we go. So that's not bad. We have a board of stuff. <laughs> and that is the dream. They on turn six, well, they know turn five. They coin out the high main, and well, you have the hex answer in hand. It's the it's just purely the dream. Living, living the dream. If I didn't have the hex, I'd probably play the thing from below. Uh, or, actually, I, I, I would probably lightning bolt uh, with the spell pad damage, trading with the 1-1, one, one, kill the high main, bring out those 2-2s. Two uh, but this way, we negate the value from getting the two hyenas. Additionally, if he's playing Nazoth, because there are death rattle minions in his deck, uh, he doesn't get the high main back. So hex there, really, really good. More options here in that we, we, you know, we, well, not, there aren't really many options. Well, actually, there's an option here. I either Lightning Bolt or I trade. Yeah, I trade. Uh, trading is good. I'm going to preserve the Lightning Bolt. Trading, though, means I've got no minions on board that can attack. That's a problem. Okay, I'm happy I saved the Lightning Bolt. I guess. And now we're just going to clear. We're going for overkill. Uh, that lightning storm is overkill on that board. Was there a need for it? Well, I just want a clear board. Just want the clear board. Particularly as we start to head into turn 9, the following turn for him. We want the board to be clear. We don't want Call of the Wild uh, to benefit any minions that are already on the board. Okay, that, that would be silly. Oh, a quick shot. And a Tempo Houndmaster. That's alright. <clears throat> um, we are overloaded. So we can't play Thunder Bluff. But what we can do is we can set up a Thunder Bluff for next turn. And this board is ridiculous. It's so crazy. Yeah, he had it. It does nothing. <laughs> it does absolutely nothing. Um, that's that's useful. Uh, I can use the lightning bolt to get through the Misha. I can then Thunder Bluff Valiant. Uh, I'd have to trade in a totem to get the buffs on my other totems, because I, I, I can't play another totem unless I get rid of one of my totems, if that makes any sense there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got to kill off a totem, right, so I can then hero power. Yeah. It, it, yeah. They, it, conceding there was the right choice. <laughs> Okay, this next game is against a warrior, and this is going to be really interesting because it depends on what kind of warrior it is. Now, recently on the ladder, I've been seeing fewer dragon warriors and more control warriors, and Cthulhu warriors as well, actually. Uh, if it's a control or a Cthulhu warrior, what scares me is the armor count that they can get up to because they can come a point in the game where if they deal with my big threats, if they kill my thunder bluffs, and they're, they've armoured up to some insane amount, like 40 or 50 armour. There's really no way I can win. You go to fatigue and you just lose the fatigue game. So, we'll see what kind of a warrior it is. Oh look, they had an axe. Hmm. Fiery War Axe, aka Fiery Win Axe. You see, it's in situations like this where they get the axe um, and they just control that early board and there's nothing you can do to stop them. They clear that board, they build up their own board uh, and win the game. That's why it's called Fiery Win Axe. Just simple board control. Well, here... <clears throat> gonna uh, get rid of that frothing. Now, frothing berserker suggests to me that this could be Dragon Warrior. It suggests that it could be OTK Warrior, probably not Control Warrior, uh, probably not Control Warrior. It could be Patron Warrior, uh, for all I know. Um, 
Oh, here's another one. Mm. Now, that taunt totem is really good. It's just soaked up uh, a weapon hit. Uh, okay, it's buffed the frothing uh, after the impact, but it soaked up a three damage weapon hit. It protected my trog. Hooray for taunt totems. And uh, yeah, that needs to be hexed. Um, we're not going to be use. We're not going to use our burn just yet. Uh, not burn. Sorry. What am I talking about? AOE. Uh, our, our AOE in our hand. We're going to save it for a bigger board. <clears throat> Let's see what he's got. Can also get some more clues. Yeah, more clues on what kind of a warrior this is. It's Dragon Warrior. Interesting. Hmm. So we can totem up here. Um. Ooh, that's interesting. And that's also interesting. Hmm. Minions on our board will now randomly get buffed up with uh, plus one health, so that could create a bit of staying power on the board for me. It could cause some of my, my minions, my cards, whatever you want to call them, my totems, to survive a bit longer. That would be pretty good. But he plays the Azadrake, Drake, and uh, the question I've got to ask myself next turn is how do I want to deal with it? Or do I want to deal with it? You see here I can hero power. I can play Totem Golem. Because it's a totem. Which means that thing from below gets cheaper. Oh, okay. So, we have a big board. Dragon Warrior. Do they play, do they play Brawl? No, not unless they are the control variant. If this is the mid-range variant, uh, Brawl is very unlikely. So, it's all about the board control. Although Deathwing is a possibility. Uh, if you look back at my channel, going back a couple of months, I've played uh, Deathwing in my Dragon Warrior. Uh, it's very effective. Because you don't run Brawl, and therefore... Uh, they don't expect any form of mass board clear. And then you play Deathwing and they cry. <laughs> anyway, let's clear the board here. Okay. Now you see, we have Lightning Storm still left in hand. Wow, and that, that totem. Four health. Wow, it's it's it really wants to stay alive. <laughs> and there's Grom. Okay. Grom Ash. Hmm. Bit awkward there, so we could draw a card first. Uh, okay, I guess we do this. Oh, it's for five, sure. Well, that was good for me. <laughs> and that totem continues to grow. Um, I think I'm pretty much out of AoE at the moment now. I, um, so now I've got to tread carefully. There's Ragnaros. It's quite annoying. Oh, the value. That belongs in a museum. Now that belongs in a museum, says Harrison Jones. And, um, yeah. We're in a really good position. Now, here. <clears throat> this is a very important play. I think I totem up here and I coin out the thing from below. Why am I doing that? Why am I using the coin in this manner? Well, I want to give Ragnaros as many targets as I can. Uh, hopefully he snipes a totem, protecting my minions. Also, the healing totem is pretty good, actually. Heal the Azadrake. That stops an execute play. And... Okay, he's going to get rid of it. Yeah, Ravaging Ghoul, pretty good for him. And now if you're the warrior, you're probably feeling... Okay, that's good. Probably feeling pretty good about yourself. You have a board here. A more threatening board, probably, than my board. If you count Ragnaros. Um, so we have to kill the Rag. Uh, the question is, how do we go about doing it? Well, we have the Charging Horsey. We have Harrison, which can trade into the rag. It's at 7 health. We could draw a card first, potentially. Yeah. 
Okay, that's good for later on. I think Halsey here and Harrison is decent. Hey, healing totem. So good here. So good. Because we're going to have two engine minions on the board. And they're both going to get healed up. Uh, to two health and that's significant because it plays around the ravaging ghoul we've seen one ghoul i think yeah we saw one plays around the second one and he looked at that and he thought no way jose no way of getting through my board and we had card draw still if we needed it from mana tide totem okay let's head into another game and it's against a hunter now <clears throat> We get the tunnel trog. Okay, so we've got some early games, something we can put down. And what we'd really like is a totem golem or a lightning bolt. That's what we'd really like to see now. Tracking. Now, from experience, that suggests to me it's Secrets Hunter. Probably. Maybe. Nothing to do there, really. Nothing to do except totem up. Uh, taunt totem's helpful though, but <clears throat> it's gonna be a, probably a slow game for me. There she is. How many secrets? One, two, three. Just three. <laughs> Yeah, just three. <laughs> oh, that's so broken and so ridiculous. Okay, let's buff it up and go face. Maybe I should have gone face first. Yeah, explosive trap. Maybe. Oh, what am I thinking? I should just have attacked first. Now my totem golem gets injured. That's really annoying. That's really awkward, actually, because now he can just trade and kill... And my totem golem dies. If it had full health, it would have survived a trade. But he's not trading. He's going face. Bloody hell. He ignored the totem golem. Oh, maybe I don't get punished as much after all. But he's played more secrets. That's pretty awkward. Do I just go face? I think I just go face. The reason I'm going face is if it's explosive, yeah. I want to trigger it again because I want his weapon to get buffed up so I can get Harrison value. That's my logic behind this. Uh, I mean, how many more secrets is he going to play, right? He's pretty much out of cards now in his hand. Uh, I have card advantage in my hand. And we go face there. The idea being he'll need to double trade if he wants to kill off my 2-1. And it may not look very attractive, so he may go face and hold the bow. No, he's not holding the bow. Damn. You see, I was hoping he'd play the Misha, attack face with the uh, the Huntress, and hold the bow for something more appealing. But no, he attacked. So do I really get any Harrison value here? Uh, I have to taunt up. I'm afraid of dying. I think I've misplayed this game a little bit. Uh, and I'm afraid of just dying now. Because against a hunter, that is a low health total. And we're only on what? Turn 5? Okay, he was forced to break through. They didn't have a kill command. He was... Oh my god. Another bow. He was forced to break through the, uh, the taunt. Use up a bow charge. Take a little bit of damage. But look, I'm at 8 health. This is so scary. I think here I have to I have to kill the Misha. Uh, I have to kill the Misha. As much as I would like to Harrison, uh, I think we do it like this, and we have to save the hex. Uh, I could have hexed Misha as well, but um, I think we need to save the hex for something big. It could come down. Okay. Nothing is triggering. So my assumption is now that that trap is Catrick. Uh, which is an interesting trap. Because I've got a spell in hand. Um, it's a 4-2 minion. Which, and we can't afford to take 4 damage. So playing spells here. Unless we have lethal. Playing spells is not a good idea. It's not a good plan at all. 
That's pretty helpful. But let's trigger a secret here. Freezing trap. Okay. Sure. And now, I think it's time for Harrison. By playing Harrison here, we are ensuring our survival for at least three more turns. Providing he doesn't have any direct damage to my face, because we got rid of the weapon. And Taunt Totem, so helpful. I'm going face there with my weapon, because I need to deal as much damage as I possibly can uh, in order to try and kill him before he kills me. Because at 6 health, I am I am in serious trouble. Because look, hero power doing 2 damage to my face there. It's really bad. But I think I have lethal here. Because double lightning bolt has just come into my hand. This is pretty good, right? This is such a great feeling. We just hit face. His secret keeper is just standing there on her own, doing nothing. And yes, this cat trick. There we go. But it does nothing. 4-2 stealth minion. Hey, great under normal circumstances. But I had lethal. And there we go. Okay. Let's look at one last game here against a mage. Now, we have the Tunnel Trog start with the Spirit Claws. This is a start that I uh, that I had in a previous game. It worked out pretty well in the long term. Uh, my Trog and my Spirit Claws were able to kill an Argent Squire. So let's play the, the Trog, but notice something in my hand. I have Feral Spirit and I have the coin. So this could be pretty interesting. The best thing he could do here for me is just ping and pass. That's the best thing he could do. Then I'll just coin out Feral and laugh. <laughs> the only thing missing from the equation is a Totem Golem and a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven to play afterwards. Okay, I took the gamble and I lost. He was able to get rid of it. Yeah. And then that's that's that that's the disadvantage of not playing the um the spirit claws and, and committing a minion to board and it just dies uh, to, a uh, to a spell or to AoE. Hmm. Okay, he plays his taunts there, the mirror images. Now, I need to I need to remove this board. Uh, Cult Sorcerer alone is, is really dangerous, but the mirror images, the, the Zero Twos, they stop me from getting to his, his Cult Sorcerer. But this way, we remove the entire board, and we are back to board control. We're overloaded, but we're back to having control, for now. Okay, ping pass is really good for me. Except I can't do very much. <laughs> um, but next turn with five mana, I'll be able to... Oh! Very slow play there. Yeah, I'll be able to, to either play the Thing from Below or the Azadrake. Now the question is, what do I want on my board? Do I want a Thing from Below as a 5-5? Five, five, or do I want an Azadrake 4-4 four, four body? I think a Thing is better. In this situation, the, the Thing is a 5-5 five, five body and it allowed me to play uh, a Totem as well. So I'm getting serious, serious value on this board here. It's really good. I'd like to preserve the Azadrake for a situation where I can get value from the spell power, either with the Lightning Bolt or with the Spirit Claws. Um, okay, so is it Trog time? Or do we just Totem up and play a thing from below? Do I want to commit the Trog here with the Feral Spirit? Do I want to commit into a flame strike? It's turn seven next turn. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. It's turn seven. Tempo mages do play flame strikes from time to time. And in this situation, at least my 5-5 five five would survive. And he's probably he probably wouldn't wouldn't want to flame strike this board Let's now. Make magic. But he wants to make some magic. Okay, he has a fireball. Sure. And the missiles. Wow, okay, this could end badly. 
Wow, got rid of those totems. It's pretty good for him. But here is what I was waiting for. As a Drake value. In conjunction with Spirit Claws, of course. And now, as a mid-range Shaman, I'm just build, trying to build up my board with totems. I have the Thunder Bluff Valiant in hand, and we can get some value uh, later. Speaking of value, that's serious value. Serious, serious value for him. Um... <clears throat> Fire Elemental uh, lets me kill his, his Azadrake with a trade-in there. Um, the question is, what do I trade? Do I trade my face or the 1-1? One, one? Do I want to take damage? Yeah, I'm happy to take damage. It's fine. My health total is still semi-reasonable. Uh, you're always scared against a, a Temper Mage because you're always thinking, what kind of burn spells do they have? You know, uh, because look, he, he's this is second Kabbalist tome, and there's another fireball. So, how much burn has he drawn from double Kabbalist tome? That has to be going through my mind right now. Okay, that's pretty good. I could have played the flame tongue. I did not want to commit because I'm conscious of flame strike and I'm conscious of other things that he could play. So. Not committing the Flame Time Totem. Next turn, we'll commit if it gives us lethal. Uh, I think it does, right? Okay, this could be a problem. That was good. Interesting. Oh, wow. Blimey, that, 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 those was, that, that's so good for him. Oh my god. And he's clearing my board. Yes, of course I lose my Thunderbuff Valiant. Of course I lose it. Why would I not lose it? My luck, right? My luck. Um, we don't have lethal anymore. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We are short. So now we just... Yeah, Counterspell. We're just going to get rid of... Wow, he actually got Counterspell. Of all the secrets, he got Counterspell from Kabbalist Tome. But, okay, we're just going to go back to our uh, our strategy of... of playing stuff and building up a board again. Um, I have Spell Power Totem, and I have three attack weapon. That's pretty good for me. Do I want to commit Tunnel Trog, Feral Spirit now? Or do I just want to play more totems? Decisions, decisions, decisions. Um, Mana Tide is decent, it draws us a card. It will draw us at least one card here before it dies, if it dies. So I'm okay with that. And we are setting up lethal now for next turn, hopefully. <clears throat> Oh, of course, we've got the Tunnel Trog, Totem Golem, Feral Spirit, Overload Combo. That's insane. Wow, another Kabbalist Tome. <laughs> That's his third Kabbalist Tome in this game. But well played, well played because how are you going to kill me? Well played. Let alone remove my board in this game. How, how are you going to do it? I'm curious to know. I don't think there's a way, right? He'd need Frost Nova Doomsayer to have a chance of coming back in this game. But he's not a Freeze Mage, he's a Tempo Mage. Uh, well, he's played this game well. He, 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 he's called Newbie newbie Player, but he's not a noob. He's he's done a good job. It's just, I think, Three Cabalist Tomes was uh, a little bit too slow for him. And he couldn't get that foothold on the board that he needed. So, there we go, the George C. Shaman. Really fun deck to play, very effective on the ladder. You can grind those games out, you know, over the medium to long term. Uh, these aren't quick games, you know, it's not like Agro Shaman, they're not quick. They do take some time, but if played correctly, if navigated correctly, uh, I think you can develop quite a solid, quite a good win rate with this deck. It's done very well for me anyway on the ladder. Um, 
Are we missing the four mana seven seven in this deck? No, I don't think we are. I I, I think the tunnel trog with the totem golem with the lightning storm with the lightning bolt. I think and I think that's all sufficient. I don't think you need the flame wreath faceless. Maybe playing one would be interesting, uh, but this, we are a mid range deck and we have enough staying power with Thunder Bluff Valiant. We have enough in the way of board clears with AOE and with Hex. I think that's sufficient. So all in all. Great deck to play. Thank you to George C for this deck. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. I'd be very, very grateful. Do take care, and I'll see you all again very soon for some more standard mode content, some more wild mode content, and maybe some arena content.